um, Obama's doing it on mass scales that we grew up, you know, hearing about the Stasi in Eastern Europe, uh, in Germany. So it's it's so frustrating, and I want to get into. Obviously, he wants to. It was a few weeks ago. I wanted to get him on. We finally got him about the latest TSA bringing back the naked body scanners for everybody, uh, even though the law says you shouldn't do it to 18 years or younger. I wanted to get him on because he heads up Liberty Guard, libertyguard.org, and, of course, bobbar.org. And I wanted to get him on about the executive actions, and I wanted to get him on about impeachment. But really, it is a surreal point in this country to see things that if they were going on in, say, an African dictatorship, you'd be amazed by them. I, I mean, it's it makes these African dictators that get caught buying 100 Lamborghinis look like good guys. It makes corrupt Eastern European systems look tame. Because when America does it, it does it on such a big scale. And here's what's crazy. If you study criminology, you study history, you study trends, when something gets this corrupt, and it's the Republicans too, and it's the American people as well, it only gets worse. I mean, we've got basically really bad cancer. We're going to go to our guests for the balance of the hour, take your phone calls, you name it, cover the waterfront. But it is a paradox. We've still got some of the best, hardest working, most moral people in the world. We're still world leaders. We're still innovators, but off our old inertia. But we also lead the world in crime, drug use, obesity, uh, corruption. I mean, we really, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And I just wonder now that crimes are committed nakedly that Nixon would have been crucified for and should have been. And I just wonder what is next? What are they thinking? What are the Republican leaders doing? That's my filibuster, Congressman uh, BobBarr.org. Thank you so much for coming on. I just wanted to set the table with that whole spinning constellation of weirdness. There's also a lot of good things happening, obviously, but you've got the floor now to cover any topic you want or go with any of those those points, sir. Well, thank you, Alex. Always great to be with you and your many, many listeners and viewers all across uh, the country uh, because you have it pegged up precisely right. And that is we remain, uh, as everybody knows, the world's greatest power, the greatest nation on the face of the earth. But the problem is we have strayed so far from our foundations that not just our founding fathers would not recognize this country today, but even if 100 years ago or 150 years ago when America was first becoming a world power, uh, you know, our leaders then would not recognize how far we've strayed. I was just last week, uh, Alex, up in New Hampshire with uh, Senator Cruz, who I'm working for as a volunteer in support of his candidacy and his campaign. And the people that we met up there, we had a Second Amendment rally uh, out in the cold, but we had a huge crowd, and then we had a huge town hall meeting. I mean, New Hampshire, Iowa, Georgia, my home state, uh, all across this land, you find communities of hardworking, honest people who simply want to be left alone to pursue their dreams uh, and to be free to do what they want in pursuit of their happiness. Uh, and yet our leaders in Washington, so many of them have become fixated on this uh, and enmeshed in this cronyism and executive power that's the problem. We have to change the leaders in Washington. That's why this election is so vital and why it's so important for you to continue to be out there raising the alarm. Getting into Obama's power grabs, I mean, they, they have the desperate criminal energy, is what I would describe it, that I've only seen in the Bolsheviks or the Nazis. And I know that those terms get overused to describe corrupt politicians, but there is a avarice and a, 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 a driving force in these people, is it because they know the world's waking up to them? Is it because they know their time is short or is it because they're confident? It's primarily because they're arrogant uh, and they simply do not, dis, do not wish to and will not abide by the rule of law. And our court system and our leadership in the Congress basically has been asleep at the switch, continues to be. I mean, for for example, you take the, the latest uh, uh, TSA goings on you mentioned. Uh, there was a court order by a federal court five over five years ago that required TSA, if it wished to continue to use these naked body scanners, 
to put forward and open themselves up to public comment so that we could at least see what they're doing. We filed way back when a, a Freedom of Information Act. They refused to give us any information. We filed uh, another letter along with other privacy-oriented organizations. We had Liberty Guard uh, to force them to do what, they, what the law requires them. But this administration is so arrogant, they have a court order that requires TSA to go to the American people, tell us what they're proposing, solicit comments, and then do it the right way. They simply refuse to do that. They ought to be held at a minimum in contempt of court. And yet Congress sits back and has done nothing so far, Alex. That's the problem. Before we get into Obama's power grab, the executive actions, how you think we should respond, uh, we learned from inside the RNC that they had a vote. Only four people voted to have a resolution calling for the beginning of impeachment investigations. I mean, if they don't even do the investigations, when they could score points for liberty by exposing the crimes, maybe scare these uh, crooks into not being so aggressive, run the wolves off, you know, at least wave a you know, flaming torch around a little bit around the campfire, they won't even do that. They're just, uh, j j just letting them do whatever they want. I want to speak to that. Uh, but first, talking about Ted Cruz, I love Ted Cruz. I mean, I think he's obviously the guy that has the best voting record right now of actually doing what he says he'll do. Uh, Trump has the people behind him, I, and, and, and I know he's changed some, and I want to believe that he's who he says he is. I know those two were getting along for a while now because they're the two leaders, the only person challenging Trump really, I think, not Rubio. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I just hate to see them start tearing each other up uh, because, you know, uh, Obviously, anything's better, in my view, than Hillary or a Bernie Sanders. What's your view on that, and why are you supporting Ted Cruz? I'm supporting Ted Cruz, uh, Alex, because far and above better than any of the other Republican candidates, and we have a very strong field, uh, particularly as compared to the Democrat field, which is uh, you know, very, very weak and shallow. Uh, we have a very strong field, almost too many really good people uh, in there running this time, but alone among all of those candidates, Ted Cruz understands the importance of protecting individual liberty in all that government does. And that includes this notion of the most important duty of government being able, being keeping us safe. Well, that's not quite true. The most important uh, function, most important responsibility of government is to protect liberty. Ted Cruz gets that. A lot of the other candidates, while they may be good on Second Amendment issues, they may be good on this, that, or the other thing, they, they miss that fundamental principle that above all else, it is the responsibility of the federal government under our constitutional republic to protect liberty. He does that, he understands it, and he alone has been fighting for that in, in the Senate. That's what impresses me about Ted Cruz, I think, uh, Alex, more than anything else. Can you imagine how he would uh, mop the floor with Hillary Clinton in a debate? I'd love it. Man, uh, that, that would be worth uh, paying a high price for a ticket to uh, watch that debate. Speaking about politics, because it's, it's interesting, you were so ahead in the polls. I know the establishment came against you. How did you lose uh, your run for the House again? Well, uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was an odd election year from that standpoint, and we're seeing, still seeing a little bit of that this cycle with the presidential race, Alex. Uh, for example, I'd served in the House for eight years, as you recall, and it is standard operating procedure in the House, and I think pretty much the same in the Senate, that if a member leaves the House and then comes back in a subsequent election, they, have, they regain their seniority, just standard operating procedure. Yet the mere fact that I had served in the House previously and would get my seniority back was somehow in that weird election year last, last time in 2014 turned against me. And uh, my opponent, uh, who eventually won the seat, uh, painted me as a, a part of the Republican establishment of all things. I mean, I was never part of the Republican establishment. Exactly. So we've got all these baby patriots, baby libertarians, conservatives just now getting involved. And so someone who's never been in Congress can say, look, he was in Congress. Don't, don't go with an insider. Let's kind of have term limits on Bob Barr, which is just, uh, I mean, you were anything but establishment. Well, that's right, but you know, uh, we continue to fight. Uh, I continue to fight just like you continue to fight for the Constitution, for individual liberty, and against the establishment. Because the establishment of full, is full of crony capitalists. Uh, you know, and 
you know, some of the other candidates, Donald Trump, for example, I mean, he proudly says, basically, I'm, I'm a crony a capitalist. Uh, I pay money to whoever is in office so I can get favors from them. As long as we have people like that in public office who do not have the public good in, in, uh, in mind and front and center, we're going to continue to have these problems. You know, a lot of that, I think, is Trump putting out red meat. But when he does say things like, oh, don't worry, we'll just surveil so much, they'll never attack us next time. We have the foreign intelligence. There's too much intelligence. They spy on everything. That's why they can't find the needle in the haystack, according to all the experts. It is, and, and, and it's about to get worse. Uh, Alex, as you know, uh, the Congress uh, slipped into the omnibus spending bill. Uh, always, always dangerous. Uh, anything that has the word omnibus in front of it, be very, very careful. But they passed that omnibus spending bill right at the end of uh, December, right before Christmas, as a matter of fact. And it, uh, it included uh, a provision that was not debated. It was just slipped in there at the last minute, this Cyber Intelligence Security uh, Act that uh, is going to make it even worse in terms of the amount of information that the government can scoop up and that it can get from private companies and they'll have immunity from, uh, from prosecution or from lawsuit for violating uh, our, our privacy. Uh, all of this new information will be now made available to the government uh, and they can't, they don't even know what to do with all the information that they have right now, aside from the fact that it is an invasion of privacy. Before we get into the executive power grab and where you see Obama going his last 11 months in office, if he's not checked, at least with an investigation, in your long history as a federal prosecutor and, of course, working in major administrations and being in Congress and seeing everything that you've seen, obviously, I'm not going to sit here and defend the CIA because it's been given a lot of unconstitutional dirty missions but if we just sit there and blame the best known agency and not the other 15 intelligence agencies people really lose the forest for the trees but there are a lot of patriotic people in all these agencies who put out information expose corruption blow the whistle look at the cia guys that died uh you know in uh, benghazi and of course the stand down uh, order there but as a culture you know when you go back to washington when you talk to other insiders I'm seeing actually a lot of military, a lot of people in intelligence saying what's happening is wrong. The former head of defense intelligence, as you know, uh, the general went public two months ago and said, no, Obama ordered us to fund al-Qaeda, al nusra and then ISIS directly on purpose, and it's wrong. We see the head of Southcom coming out a few weeks ago and saying, putting women in frontline combat will ruin the military. It's terrible, but I'll follow the order. People I don't think get, this is re really rebellion level but it but but it's not mutiny it, it's it's people standing up for the constitution against a president who is at mutiny with the country and, and I, I mean there's not strong enough words but are you aware of this major battle now that's coming out in the open inside the system itself instead of the american people being played off by soros and the left just to have a big anti-government war with the police and the military and the cia like it's all our enemy i think we should understand that actually some of the best people are in there they're actually more awake on average than the general public and they need public support out here on the front lines to be able to do what they do to try to save this country because i've been aware of this for a long time but I've met with groups of prominent special forces people. A lot of them have come on the show, like Tim Kennedy last week, and others. And, I mean, they say massive awakening. I talk to others. I mean, it's just, uh, I don't mean to be kind of ranting here. It's just, I don't think people understand. There is a giant counter-revolution basically going on behind the scenes, even if this election doesn't work. It's an incredible time to be alive right now. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because despite all of the problems, despite the massive uh, bureaucracies we're dealing with in, in, in the area of intelligence, part of the problem is we have way too much bureaucracy and both the, Bush, the prior Bush administration and this administration has continued to fund and expand this huge bureaucracy. That's part of the problem. Who do we, the people, fight? Where exactly is the problem? You know, you go after one, one agency, one provision, then you find out another agency is doing the same thing, but has power over the first agency. You know, we, uh, it used to be that the CIA was, was formed to provide a single focus point for all foreign intelligence analysis and operations coming to the President of the United States. Well, 
never worked that way because president after president, Republican and Democrat, wouldn't stand up to the bureaucracy over at the Pentagon and really back the CIA. Now it's far worse because we have something called the DNI, the Director of National Intelligence. So trying to put your finger 